Welcome back everyone. Throughout those sessions, we're gonna discuss how to do CRUD operation using SharePoint Framework BNB. So all I did here, I just created a new folder and that one with the name is PFX BNB. After that, from the command prompt, I navigated to this folder. And to create a new project, I will use yo space at Microsoft backslash share point and hit enter and from here what's your solution name i will keep it spfx bnb crude operation and hit enter and which baseline package do you want to target for your component i will target sharepoint online only and hit enter after that, where do you want to place the files? I will use the current folder and hit enter. After that, do you want to allow the tenant admin the choice of being able to deploy the solution to all site immediately without running any feature deployment or adding apps in the sites? For me, I will go with no. After that, will the component in this solution require permission to access web API for me I will go with no after that which type of client side component to create definitely I will go with web part and what's your web part name we can keep it as it is SPFX BMP crude operations and hit enter and the description we will use SPFX PMP to apply CRUD operation and hit enter. Which framework would you like to use? I will go with no JavaScript framework and hit enter. After the scaffolding has been completed successfully, we need to run two command. The first command is called npm shrink wrap and that basically gonna do one task to stop any locking for our packages or any dependencies to use SharePoint PMB. After that, we need to install SharePoint PMB. So to do that, first command here, it will be npm space shrink wrap and hit enter. Yeah, seems I forgot that N, so it will be shrink wrap and hit enter, cool. After that, let's install SharePoint PMP by running this command, npm, let's have here some space, yeah, space, install, space, sp, hyphen, p, and p, hyphen, js, and space, hyphen, hyphen, save, and hit enter. After that one has been downloaded successfully, I will type the command code space dot to open the visual code after that we will navigate to the source folder and from there i will navigate to web part folder and here we can find sharepoint framework pmp crude operation i will open this file so first of all we need to import the pmp library that we downloaded so to do that i will say here import asterisk as pmp from this library called it sp iphone pmb hyphen js after that i scroll down to the web part implementation and inside the render method i added here inside this dot dom element dot enter html i added the very simple html table tags and that table gonna consist of four columns here will accept student id student name student department and the last one student city as you can see i created the table and this table have student id as the first one other one student name student department and student city and by end of this table i gonna have a separate section gonna have three buttons for crude operation insert update delete and for reading or getting the value of the student here i added this button here 
besides the student id so once the end user gonna put the student id he can retrieve his details after that i have here a dedicated section for showing the status of this operation if you're gonna insert update or delete you're gonna have this message status that's basically very basic html that's why i prepared it and after that we need to start implementing the binding event here after this render method i will have here the part of private and that one will not accept any parameter and it will be of type void it will not return anything and here inside that one gonna be this this dot dom element and that query selector gonna be fired once the user gonna click on button insert so i will take this one as a copy and paste it here after that dot add event listener and here on which event it's gonna be on click event please go and execute this method here let me type here this so here let's have some space and it's gonna be this and let's name it a name insert student and here is that and i will define this method here so it will be private insert student and that method gonna be void and for now let's keep it empty all right and one more part here let's remove the extra space here like that and have here this dot bind event after that let's grab the values from this table so inside the method insert student we will grab those values using document dot get element by id so it will be var student id equal document dot get element by id and here is it i will scroll up to take from this text box the id of student id as a copy and paste it here i will do the same for all the others this one will be for a student name and a student department i will take this one as a copy and paste it here as an id and the last one is student city i will take it as a copy and paste it here and here the value of this text box after that we need to define a variable to hold the site url and definitely it will be of type string so we're gonna say this dot context dot page context dot site dot absolute url and append to this absolute url underscore abi and after that web after that lists after that get this list by title and we're gonna create a list okay let's give it a name for example students and i need out of this list actually i need the items so backslash items it will be like that so this will be the constant with the name site url of type string I'm gonna fetch using context dot page context dot site dot absolute url I'm gonna fetch the url of this web and i'm gonna append to this absolute url this part underscore abi web list is get by title I'm gonna fetch this list which have a name students I'm gonna return all the items inside this list after that we will use pmp it's a basically straightforward approach to insert items inside the sharepoint list so from here we're gonna type pnp dot sp dot web dot lists and from here we're gonna get the list name by saying get by title and we need to provide as an string 
the list name actually we have it here students after that dot items dot add then we're gonna do right now one thing we will do the mapping between those variables that we get from our table and the sharepoint list columns so on your left make sure it's the same name over the sharepoint list so here gonna be title and that one as like a key and value gonna take this value then it will be student name as a key and this will be the value for this one the next column will be st department as a key and this will be the value for this one and make sure about your keys will be your sharepoint list columns name make sure about the spelling about the capital completed successfully we're gonna say dot then here is that response we're gonna use alert adding an item has been completed successfully and from here don't forget about your semicolon let me scroll up i think as well we forgot here our semicolon and this dot point event don't forget about this one as well so that's basically will be how to add an item using pnp you're gonna just call pnp library dot sp sharepoint dot web dot list and out of this you need to retrieve the list name called it students and from there dot items dot add and inside this one gonna accept key and value key gonna represent the column name of your sharepoint list and here is that the value to be inserted in this column and it's gonna be for all the other values student name student department student city whatever gonna go with the same way the next step we will navigate to sharepoint online so here is at my tenant id dot sharepoint.com and from the site content we need to create a new sharepoint list from this button new list and i will go with blank list students and you can give and this list mainly as a demo for spfx pnp and click create after that i will provide here the sharepoint list columns as we agreed it should be the same key that you provided here and the last one student city add a column single line of text and with student city after we added our four columns here title student name department and city it's time to test our code by go and open this command prompt and from there we need to run gulb build and hit enter seems everything is moving smoothly the next step is about to deploy this solution to sharepoint online so we need to run two command the first one gulp bundle space hyphen hyphen ship and hit enter the next step is to run this command it will be gulp space package hyphen solution space hyphen hyphen ship and hit enter awesome here is that we can find the package has been created successfully for us in this path and here is that the status it's all done so i will navigate to my local machine to the, here is that my project folder i can find sharepoint folder and from there solution folder and here is that the package has been created so i will navigate again to my sharepoint online and i will navigate to apps for sharepoint if you don't know how to reach there please watch my previous video so here all i have to do is just like upload this package to apps for sharepoint and here is that upload completed successfully working on it I'm gonna take around one second also here is that we gonna 
click on deploy it looks perfect after that we need to do one more step i will navigate again to my command prompt and from here we need to run gulb space serve and hit enter after that from my tenant.sharepoint.com go to any sharepoint site over there and from this ribbon click on it and click on add an app and from here we can find spfx pmp crude client side operation or solution has been added there this one basically with the same name of your package that you has been deployed successfully in your app catalog so from this app all you need to do just click on this app And it's gonna take a while till it's gonna be deployed to your SPFX site. Keep refreshing the page. And look at that, it has been deployed successfully to your page. After that, please navigate to your tenant ID.sharepoint.com backslash underscore layout backslash 15 backslash workbench.aspx. But once I navigated to this one to test my SPFX code, I found out this warning, which is gonna say your web part will not appear in the toolbox. Please make sure Gulp Serve is running in a web part project. However, Gulp Serve is running. So to solve out this issue, I navigated to this te technet from Microsoft and here is that those article gonna recommend to run a command that we run it actually in our previous video but we forgot about it this video which is gonna be gulp space trust hyphen dev hyphen cert and hit enter after that you need to run gulp serve again so after that I will refresh again my page and after refresh if you click on plus button and search for your web part you're gonna find it here spfx pmb crude operation so here seems that we forgot something as well this button insert should have a hash before this part it gonna look like this okay hash part and don't forget about the semicolon let me navigate back and do one more refresh here and right now it works fine gonna accept the data for the student so for example here 101 and my name is Darwish department gonna be computer science and city we can say Vancouver after that I will click on insert and after that I will navigate to SPFX and I'm gonna check the list by navigating to site content and here is that students right now it have one item let me open it also right now we can find the item has been inserted successfully 101 Darwish CS Vancouver Thank you for watching and see you in the next session.